Hi there, it's Peter here again, the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front-end development. In today's video, we'll wrap it up, we'll recreate this cool hover effect. But before we do that, don't forget to smash the like, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And now on to the JavaScript part of this project. We want to capture the cursor position relative to the title container and we'll use JavaScript for that. We have a React component and inside of this title container, we will run a simple on mouse move event. And we will try to run a method that we need to create on a mouse move. Okay, so now let's create the method. And inside of it, we will need to get a couple of things. First thing is the width and height of our title container. Okay, so the element that we are hovering over, we want to capture the width and height. And for this to work, obviously we need to add the ref reference to our title container. So let's do that here. Copy the class and create a reference to it. Now we can target it. Now we can get this element and get the client width and client height and store it in width and height. Okay, so let's see if this works. We will log this and we will log the width and height and see what happens when we hover over. Okay, let's go back to the browser and we hovering over and we're getting width and height. Obviously it's not changing, it's always the same. And this is the size of our element. If I resize the window, you see how the size changes accordingly. And so we have the width and height and now we need to get also, now we need to get also the position of the mouse cursor. To get the current mouse position, we will pass in E as an event into the on mouse move. And then we will console lock E dot and we'll use the native event. Okay, if you haven't used it, then check out the synthetic event on the React docs. If you find that you need underlying browser event for some reason, simply use the native event attribute to get it. Okay, so this will give us the native mouse event. So if we go native event and console log dead, you'll see that we get some useful info. And this is the mouse event. When we open it, we'll see what we have access to. And all we need to do, we need to get the offset X and offset Y. Okay, so if I go to the top left of our element, and hover over and out, one of these last ones, should have the offset X and offset Y pretty small, okay? And if I go to the bottom right corner, we should see the number pretty close to the size of it. And that is this page, uh, sorry, offset X and offset Y, okay? So our size is roughly this, and that's how we are gonna calculate the percentage of how far of that element to the right we are or to the bottom. Okay, so we'll use the offset X and offset Y to calculate the percentage of where our cursor is. Let's jump back to VS Code and instead of the console log, we'll just use the native event and we'll store new variable. This time we call it OX, like offset X and we want to get the native event and the offset X divided by the width and then the result, we want to multiply it by 100. Okay, so get to get the value in percentages. Okay, so this is the offset X and we can duplicate the line, change it to off offset Y and this time we'll multiply the offset Y by the height. Okay, so we're getting two new variables and now we will store them in a local state of our component. So we'll need to create a default state 
then in the mouse move we will update the state and then we'll reuse these new values inside of our render method okay so for now we we'll just want to console log these two new values and we should get something similar to values between 0 0 to 100 100 okay let's see if this works We are in the browser. In the top left, we should see values roughly around zero and zero. And if we are at the right side, it's 100 and zero. And at the bottom should be close to 100 and 100. As you can see, they, these are long numbers. We want to round them up. So that would be our math.floor. And we'll do the same thing for the Y offset. And this should give us uh, rounded numbers. So closer to 0, 0 and 100, 100 when we are in the top right corner. Okay, so this is exactly what we wanted. Now we just need to apply it to the right elements at the right time. Let's jump back again to VS Code and we will create a state the default state will be x0 and y0 and now we can instead of console logging we will update the state and we'll update the x to our offset x and y to our offset y now we have access to it inside of the render method. So every time we mouse over, this state gets updated and we can destructure it and get the values updated inside of the render method. We'll use the destructuring, destructure the state and the values we try to get is the X and Y coordinates. Okay, so now we can reuse these two values and update the mask X and mask Y attributes on this title container. If you are familiar with React and how to update inline styles, pause the video, try to challenge yourself and I'll reveal my solution shortly. So hopefully you tried at least work out the solution. I will simply create a new mask style constant and this will be object that we want to modify and later apply to the title container. The first will be the name of the attribute we want to modify. So mask sx will be our x value and mask, mask y will be our y value. Okay, so these are our mask styles. And then we can simply go to the title container and apply the styles, style equals and paste our mask styles inside of it. Okay, so we are taking this and then applying it to our title container, which should update when we hovering over our element. Okay, so let's try if this works. Let's go to the browser, refresh the page, and you really see that our mask is moving based on where we are. Pretty cool effect. If we look at the original, you'll see that the position of the mask is slightly different. And for that, if we look at and inspect the project title, the clone wrapper, you'll see that the clip path calculation is much more complicated than ours. Okay, we are just reusing the calculated value, but here is a some modification minus 50 times 0 0.4. So if you want to get exactly the same effect, we will need to copy the exact same calculation. Okay. I didn't want to overcomplicate it to start with, but if we go now to CSS and change it, I'll keep this one in the code so you can refer to it, but we'll move this in and reuse polygon clip paths from the original website from the awards.com. Mask X, mask Y are the same variables and the calculations are the same. Okay, so this should give us exactly the same result. 
Okay, let's go to our app, refresh, and now you see how we are very, very close to the final animation. The only thing we have to do, we don't have any transition and easing. Okay, so this is just moving very hard, and if we move off also, it doesn't go back to the original position. Okay, so we need to tweak a few things, but we are very close to replicating effect on this website. To add the easing, we can go back to VS Code and inside of a style sheet, I'll just paste in the transition. We are transitioning all attributes in 0 0.8 seconds and this is the cubic buzzer. If we save it, we should see some nice easing instead of the hard cut. You see how it's following the mouse in a nice easing. And to make sure that it goes away when we mouse out, we'll need to add the mouse out event on the element as well. We copy the mouse move, we'll change it to mouse out. And we'll create this method on the class as well. And inside of it, we'll simply set the state to zero. Okay, so we're resetting it to the original position. Every time we move out of the title, we want it to reset back to zero. So let's see if this works. Mouse out, last check on mouse out. Yes, this should work. We'll save it and go back to the browser. See if we are moving correctly. And if we go out, it animates out. Okay, so as you can see, we've pretty, pretty replicated the effect found on this nice portfolio where the cursor is following or where the mask is following the cursor with a nice cool easing. Okay, so this is it. That's the final state of our application. Hopefully you've learned something new. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. And as I said, if you want a different following of the path, you can play with the calculation of the clip path. Okay, so if you want a different effect, maybe going from top to bottom, play with it, see what you come up with and uh, let me know in the comments. If you've enjoyed tutorial like this, when we broke it down, deconstruction, CSS and HTML, I'm very, very curious to know what do you think about it. Now let's quickly recap how this was created. If we go back to the elements section, you see that we have inline style mask X and mask Y that are by default the zero zero. And then we have two elements inside of it. One is the darker one that you see by default. And one is the lighter one, which only comes and becomes visible when we hover over. And that one has the clip path and transition on it. Okay, so we are transitioning, we are calculating inside of the react component, the X and Y coordinates, updating the custom CSS attribute. And then that is used to calculate the clip path. And there is a simple or looks like more complicated calculation of the clip path that returns the polygon based on the cursor position. Okay, so this was all done using CSS and JavaScript and React, but you can do the same thing in Angular or Vue.js. I think the original site is using Vue.js, not React. So we've pretty much replicated this inside of React. And one more little thing when we close the DevTools, you'll see that the mask is not sitting exactly on top. We'll need to add CSS to the clone wrapper and either give it a width 100% or right to zero, bottom zero, whatever you prefer. We'll do it this way. In my example, this should stretch that element on top of it and should cover it exactly how we want it. Okay, so that was one last remaining piece of CSS for this effect to work full screen or full width. And that's it. That's the complete award winning website effect recreated deconstructed. Hopefully you've enjoyed this mini series and let me know in the comments. Would you like to see more videos like this where we break it down, then do the CSS and then HTML or JavaScript? Let me know in the comments. And if you have another effect that you would like to recreate, leave links inside of the comments too.
Don't forget to smash the like, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.